saw it, internet. A very long time ago, I reached 200 subscribers and I held a little drawer for a mini quilt. Deborah won and she requested Batik and Cats. And then I got really busy. <laughs> I was trying to get the Rainbow Room quilt finished in time for the opening. And I'm sure that by now Deborah has assumed that I have forgotten all about it. I haven't, I promise. And I've finally got a bit of free time, so it's time to hit the sketchbook and design something. So I've been thinking about some of the cat quilts I've seen and there's a few sort of basic shapes that tend to crop up. There's kind of the sort of that shape and then there's the one that's more of a sitting down cat. So I was thinking maybe it would be fun to combine them into a sort of long landscape mode of wall hanging um, maybe sort of have a, a wall or something and have some cats sitting on it and maybe put a tail on the cats so it'd be sort of a hangy down tail and then maybe a sitting up tall cat that would also have a tail of some sort Maybe a straight down tail might look better on that one. And then another sitting cat, maybe with its tail up. Or something. something like that. So now I just need to translate that into some actual measurements. So cue the music while I spend some time thinking. I don't like the tail up cat. I think it might have to be a tail down cat as well. So that's the design. I'm reasonably happy with that. Now I've just got to turn that into blocks so that it's actually sewable. It should be pretty easy looking at it. What I've basically got is mostly a whole lot of snowboard blocks and a few half square triangles. So the cat's head is a square there, half square triangles and a rectangle in between. Cat's body is, there's one snowboard block there. It's another snowboard block there. Tail is a, a block snowballed on both sides and another one that's two rectangles. And this could either be a snowballed long rectangle or a block with a half square triangle. So this is basically the same process I used to make the cockatiel quilt. Just find the rectangles and then make them all match up. And then to make it easy to sew together, I want to make rows, basically. So I think there'll be this cat will be its own vertical column because that will be the easiest way to construct that. And then these cats will be made in rows alongside them. So I'm just really thinking about what order am I going to have to sew things together and so that I'm not ever having to do Y seams. 
how to make things easy on yourself. By making them look complicated at the start, it gets easier later. Right, so that, believe it or not, is a pattern in my world. The other thing I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier on myself is colour in the cats. So when I'm cutting all these little bits of fabric, I know what colours they need to be. Well, not necessarily what colours, but like, so I can tell what parts are cat and what parts are background or wall. This is not necessarily colours it will end up as, it's just giving me a visual on where the blocks are. This is obviously a lot more planned process than the last couple of mini quilts I've made where it's just been like, make it up as I go along. But if you want to piece complicated shapes, you need to actually have a plan when you start or otherwise nothing's going to line up. So then I'll have some sort of wall underneath here, which again won't necessarily be red, it'll just be whatever colour I decide once I get the fabrics out. And that's my design process. Now I've just got to figure out how much of each fabric I'll need and then I can pick out some colours. I was up in Wellington the other day and dropped into Busy Bees Quilt Shop, which is a lovely shop, and picked up these batiks, which I thought might work quite nicely for the cats. Obviously I've got four here and I've only got three cats, but I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll use three of them for the cats and then the final one I'll make a border around the whole thing or maybe use it for binding but what do I do as a background I want to have that brick wall that they're sitting on so I want to have a bit of contrast between the bottom and the top and the background my first thought always is do something scrappy I don't think I've got enough contrasting fabrics here because they're all very similar and these pale ones I've only got some really tiny pieces so I doubt any of those will be enough and then when I bring my cat fabrics on top of them there's not enough contrast anyway so I think I'll just have the cats and batiks and I'll use prints for the background so here's option two which I kind of like maybe too much contrast between top and bottom and I'm actually now that I look at it I'm not sure I want to do it scrappy after all back to my stash there's this one sticking with the cream which is cat themed which kind of helps <laughs> then I've got this grey which is a New Zealand pattern that could work or I've got this other cat fabric I'm not sure about this dark one with the cream it's oh or how about we put that on the top now that could be interesting have it almost a nighttime scene the cats really glow against this gray background it's got enough contrast between top and bottom that the wall they're sitting on is delineated without being too contrasty. I think I like this pink a bit better for the third cat and then I'll use this maybe for a border or something. Right, lots of tiny little pieces to cut out. so far but I think it needs a border to brighten it up a bit 
I've decided I'm going to use the leftovers of the cat fabrics for the border. I've sewn them into strip sets and now I'm going to cut them into strips to make a patchwork border. There were enough pieces left over that I could put some into the backing as well. And of course I had to use that cat themed cream fabric somewhere. I think I'm going to try and keep the quilting reasonably simple. For the cats, I think I'll use this as an opportunity to practice using curved rollers. This koru pattern on the background is making me think of swirling fog, so I think I might emphasise that with a swirl design. And for the wall, well, the obvious choice is a nice brick pattern. blends in a bit much with the border so I think I might add a flange. Which colour though? Yeah that was definitely the right choice. Just gives it a nice subtle frame. I hope you like it Deborah. I'm actually a wee bit nervous about this one because Deborah's actually a quilter herself so I hope my quilting's up to snuff. <laughs> taken a ridiculously long time to get it done. I'm really sorry about that. I'm actually very very close to hitting 300 subscribers and I've only just got the 200 subscriber quilt done. I don't think I'm going to do a giveaway for 300 just because the numbers are starting to speed up a little bit so celebrating each hundred seems a bit much so I think the next giveaway challenge will be when I hit 500. So tell all your friends so we get there faster. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing. And I will see you next time. Ka kite anō internet. Mm -hmm.